Ciao ragazzi, welcome back. We are back with match day six of European action. We're talking Champions League and Europa League. Um, yeah, I'm excited, so let's just get right into the video. with another video here uh, if you haven't done so yet please make sure you subscribe like and leave comments below uh, but let's get into the top five takeaways for match day six in european actions for italian teams coming in number five um a very positive note six out of the seven italian teams progress into the knockout rounds uh this is quite a feat uh, to see uh this many italian teams move into the next round uh it, it shows how kind of what kind of strong uh, league it is that we have six out of seven teams qualify. Yeah, the seventh team uh, was also a strong team, but uh, unfortunately in European action they were a little too inconsistent. So uh, the six out of seven clubs progressing forward, it's, it's great for uh, Serie A, and you know if we're talking coefficients, it would be great for the league, but we don't do that anymore. So uh, nonetheless, it's great to see the, so many clubs progressing out, and maybe we can see some, uh, you know, for both Champions League and Europa League that you know the your Italian clubs are going far in uh, the European action. But well, well, it's time to tell, but it's a great start to uh, the campaign. And uh, let's move on to number four. All right, number four, we're gonna be the Debbie Downers here. Uh, we are gonna talk that one team that did not qualify for the knockout rounds. We're gonna talk about Inter Milan. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a failure uh, to put it up short. Um, obviously, Interisti and many Italian, many Italian f followers had Inter going fairly deep into the knockout rounds of, uh, of Champions League. But they were far too inconsistent in Champions League. Uh, did not play well. I mean, they had they had fairly good lineups going into these games, but they played very inconsistently as they have been in the league. Unlike the league where they're currently in second place in Champions League, unfortunately, Mönchengladbach has played above expectations. Shakhtar played above expectations. And Real Madrid, uh, they did struggle, but they did enough to progress. And actually, they won their group. And Gladbach was the second team. So, yeah, it, uh, Inter, you know, they had their chances. Uh, you can blame Conte, you can, which many people are doing. You can blame the players, but um, at time and time again, it shows that you know with short rest, Conte cannot plan these things well, and the team struggles. Uh, so on these short short rest, Inter has just been struggling in Champions League despite trying to do well, uh, underperforming against Shakhtar and Gladbach, um, and then obviously getting beat by Real Madrid, even though they played well in one of the games, one of the two games, um, still. Inter, a catastrophic failure for them. Uh, Inter DC won Conte out. I'll leave that to them. Not for me to judge, but they are second at the table, so I'm just going to say that. But that's number four for our countdown takeaway. Now, coming in at number three, we're looking at Lazio, Atalanta, and Napoli. Uh, none of these three teams had knockouts locked up. They all needed to do is just at least draw, you know, handle the results, uh, and they would get through. And all three held serve. Uh, Atalanta getting a big win. Uh, against Ajax, Lazio drawing Brugge, Bruges, uh, and of course Napoli drawing Real Sociedad. Obviously, they almost had that game won actually, uh, but all three progressed to the knockout rounds, coming in second in their respective groups. Uh, so great for them, great for City Yacht to have the three clubs continue on into the knockout rounds. Uh, we saw what Atalanta did last season, uh, very great stuff. It drew a lot of uh, attention into City A. Lazio be, being managed fantastically by Simone and Zaga right now. Uh, what they've gone through this season, it's it's it'd be, it's great to see more people having their eyes on Lazio and including uh, Immobile, Linkovic, Savic, and Luis Alberto, uh, three fantastic players uh, who who the world need to see more eyes on because these these are fantastic players to watch. And of course Napoli, they're just a fantastic team from front to back. Uh, so three clubs, three strong clubs are moving on to knock it around. They held serve uh, when it was you know. It was unsure whether they're going to be able to or not. We were all pretty confident that they were going to all be successful in this. So they progress, and it's great for Serie A. So uh, kudos to Lazio, Atalanta, and Napoli for progressing to the next round, the knockout rounds of their your, your respective competitions. Coming in at number two, uh, we're talking about Milan and Roma. Uh, both clubs already had their, uh, their, their knockout tickets punched, if you will. So neither of them really had to, uh, to try really hard to do well in the next game. So they both they got to rotate several players, uh, rest a lot of key players for the league matchups, both, you know, Milan currently in first place in the league, Roma trying to make their push for Champions League. Uh, so they got to rest a lot of key players, uh, got to rotate heavily, got to get some people who didn't get much experience, that much needed uh, pitch time. 
Uh, and what we saw was, you know, Roma, as expected, they they'd probably lose with the lineup that they had. Milan, they got a win, and uh, actually Lille, uh, with the result that Lille got, Milan actually got in first place of their group, so that's a great result for Milan. But both clubs, Roma and Milan, progressed into the knockout rounds, uh, and this was already established before match day six, so they could rotate a lot. And that's very key for both of them when they're trying to make not only a deep run in both of uh, in, in Europa League, but also in Serie A, do well there. So, uh, much needed break for their key starters there, and uh, kudos again to both Milan and Roma. And coming in at number one, of course, we're going to talk to reigning champions of Serie A. We're talking Juventus. Uh, they also had knockouts already, uh, their tickets punched. Many people, including myself, thought, hey, there's no reason that, you know, Barca or uh, Juventus are going to put up their star lineups. There was no really need to try hard in this game because the, the standings were set. At least so I thought, and many people thought. But Juve said, uh-uh, bump that. Uh, we're going to put up our big lineup. Barca put up a good lineup as well. Uh, but what we saw is a masterclass from Pirlo finally against a good club. Well, debate about that with Barca now. But uh, Juventus wiped the floor at New Camp. Uh, 3-0 victory. Uh, wonderfully, wonderfully done. Two penalties by Ronaldo. A sensational goal by Weston McKinney. They not only win the game and go into knockout rounds and, and, and good momentum, but they won the group. Uh, they had to win by two-plus goals uh, in this game to get that first place. And it looked very bleak. Going into this game, it's like that's why I said there's no chance that they would move on. But they surprised many people, including yours truly, uh, winning by 3 0 and then making up that goal differential. So by head to head, they won their game 3 0. Barca won 2 0 earlier, earlier at uh, J Stadium. So by that, Juve has the advantage. They won the group based off of that. And so now Juventus, they have an easier group, easier matchup going into the second round. Uh, we talked about at, on, on City I Sit Down how. You know, if you finish second place, there are some winnable games there. But, you know, ideally you win first in their group. You, you avoid some of the big dogs. Chelsea, Bayern Munich, now they do that. So, uh, Juventus' chances for going a little bit deeper into the, into the Champions League has increased significantly. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the team that we were wanting to see for the longest time and Juventini wanted to see for the longest time finally showed up. Let's see if they can continue this form. Maybe that's a little bit of luck that the team needed. Uh, some, some good mojo, some good play to get the rest of the league play to continue to do better for them. So we'll see. But that was an excellent performance, a masterclass for Pirlo and the boys. Uh, Buffon, the ageless wonder, right? Man of the match for most people. Uh, so Juventus, uh, they move on. Top of their group, wonder, wonder, wonderfully done. Uh, but that's our top five takeaways from European action, action on match day six. Tell us what your top five takeaways are. Do you agree? Do you have something other? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, like, leave comments. Uh, make sure you follow us, City I Sit Down, on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook as well. You can listen to our podcast anywhere that streams music. So uh, definitely check that out. And we will catch you either on the next podcast or the next video, Match Day 7, uh, here on City I Sit Down. Ciao. One, two, make it